Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some very basic pathfinding. We're not going to get too complicated with it. We just want to get the base level in. So we're just going to create one, get it working, and then maybe put in four or five and see how it feels. Let's go ahead and hop into Godot and we'll get started. So there's a couple things I do want to do right out the gate. Let's go ahead and rename this. We're just going to use the damageable as the enemy test. So we're just going to call that enemy test. And then to actually get pathfinding working, we're going to be using the built-in pathfinding. So we're just going to go ahead and add a child to the enemy test that's going to be Navigation Agent 3D. Now, Navigation Agent 3D bases its entire calculation based off of its parents. So we do need to have it be a direct child of the rigid bot. Besides that, I'm only going to enable avoidance. I'm not going to mess with anything else here. There's a lot of different settings. None of that's too important right now. I am going to leave debug on. That way we can actually tell the path that we're moving. Now I do want to go ahead and create a script for the enemy test. So let's create a script underneath enemies. And we're just going to call this basic enemy navigation agent. And we're going to inherit this from rigid body 3D. And we'll go ahead and create that. Now, before we actually jump into code, there's one other thing I do need to do, and that is create the navigation region 3D. So we go ahead and create that, and let's put it right up here above environment. We do have to make the environment a child of the region 3D. So the region 3D will sample all its children in order to generate the navigation mesh. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and create the navigation mesh resource. There's a lot of different options in here. I did find that I needed to set up max climb to 0.5. This will actually get up over the rocks so that the AI moves properly. So let's go ahead and set up that and we can select the little option up here for bake nav mesh. And that's just going to go ahead and create a mesh for the AI to walk over. And as we can see, it looks pretty good. They should be able to navigate fairly well over this, avoiding some of the more complex objects and everything looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and leave that. There is of note, the nav mesh is on top of the world. This won't really matter depending on the environment, depending on how we set it up. But later on, we will need to go ahead and set up a baking AABB. This just makes sure that there's a volume that it doesn't go out of that way we don't bake nav mesh unnecessarily which will increase the performance cost of actually pathfinding on the nav mesh so all that's set up let's go ahead and drag the basic enemy navigation agent onto the enemy test now that we got the nav mesh set up let's go ahead and make a couple changes to the character before we hop into code i did go ahead and change the mass down to two kilograms and set the dampening to 0.3 on angular this just makes sure it doesn't rotate too much and then on the mesh instance i'm going to go ahead and set this as a sphere and the collision shape the same. This is because it's going to kind of roll around like a roller ball for the AI. And later on, we're actually going to be hiding the mesh. But for right now, this is just good for debugging. So let's go ahead and hop into code and get started. So first off, we're gonna get a couple exports in here. The first two are going to be maximum velocity and velocity change. These are pretty self-explanatory, though they are entirely debugged. So these won't actually be in the final version of the game. Later on, we're actually going to be using arms and legs to pull the rigid body around. Whereas right now we're just using it for debugging to move it around in a smooth manner towards the path. So let's go ahead and throw in a reference to the player target. And we're also gonna throw in a reference to the navigation agent. This is going to be of type navigation agent 3D. Now we are going to need two private variables and both of these are going to be vector threes. We're going to have the last player position as well as the last enemy position. We're going to use these to make sure that we have not called the generate path functions when we haven't moved very much. So this is just for performance reasons. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and throw in a physics process. And first off in that physics process, we're gonna create an if statement and we're just going to check, like I said, to see if the last player position's distance to the current player position is greater than half a meter, or if the last enemy position distance to the current position is greater than 0.5 meters. This is just going to make sure that we don't call this function unless we've actually moved or the player target has moved. So within this function, we're going to go ahead and set the last player position to the current player position, as well as the last enemy position to the current global position of this enemy. And finally, we're going to go ahead and set the variable target position to the last player position. This setting of this variable will actually trigger the generation of all of the pathfinding so we only want to do this every now and then now just below that we're going to go ahead and add an if statement for if the target is reached and if so we're just going to go ahead and return this makes sure that we don't do anything if the navigation agent has already arrived at its target now besides that we are going to go ahead and change the constant force to zero constant force is a variable within rigid body that allows us to set a force and then just leave it and it will continue to apply force now because 
because it will continue to apply it, we do need to zero it out if we've reached the target. Now, just below this, we are going to go ahead and create a new variable, which will be called target velocity. And all we're going to do is assign it to the difference between the global position and the get next path position of navigation agent. This gets our delta towards the direction we want to travel. Now we're going to normalize that and multiply it by the maximum velocity. This gets our theoretical maximum ideal velocity. Now we aren't going to actually just set the constant force to that velocity. What we're going to do is set it to the difference between the target velocity, actually misspelled target velocity, and the current linear velocity. With the linear velocity being the current velocity of the object, that way we get the difference between the two, which will allow us to alter the current velocity towards what we do want it to be. And then we just multiply that by the velocity change multiplied by the delta. And then finally, all we're going to do is set the constant force to the target velocity. And that'll be pretty much it. That should go ahead and make the AI follow along the path generated by the Pathfinder. Now we do need to set up a couple of variables here. So let's go ahead and set the player target as well as the navigation agent 3D. And let's set the maximum velocity to something like 30. And we'll set the velocity change to also 30. This means that it will be able to reach its maximum velocity in a theoretical one second from standing still. Mind you, depending on which way it's flying, it may actually take a little bit longer than that. So let's go ahead and save that and hit play and see how it feels. So we can see its little red line. That is the debug line for the pathfinding and it is moving towards us. And if we go around a pillar right here, you can see the object is moving around and that's pretty much it. Everything just works. So that'll be it for this week. Next week, we're going to go ahead and get into actual setting up of arms and legs. And these are just going to be debug spheres that will determine where the arm and leg placements will go. And then also kicking velocity towards that direction using actual physics. And we're going to go ahead and implement all of that in debug before we actually throw in any meshes. So we'll actually get to building out a character body for the AI maybe the next week or the week after that. We'll see how long it takes us to get the actual physics somewhere that is comfortable. I do want these to eventually be running on walls or ceilings, so we'll see how we can approach that to get it working. But that's it for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.